We are shown Katie a beautiful young woman as she stands on a lonely road. Then she goes up to a passing truck and asks for a ride. She has been given a ride by a truck driver, who then approaches her while she is sitting in the car. When he slowly touches her leg, Katie knows what he's doing. Because of Katie's seduction, he takes off his pants and unzips his shoes. When the opportunity arises, she gets out of the truck taking her luggage with her. The truck driver gets out and runs after the woman, and while shouting at her again when Katie reaches a mountain, she notices a house down below. Just the owner isn't there when Katie approaches that house. Thus Katie is seated in front of the house. Later, when Jess' owner shows up, he recognizes Katie and inquires after her identity and purpose around Jess. Katie starts acting sexy. Jess walks into the house and starts milking his cow. After telling Katie to leave, Katie keeps on going. Rather than leaving, he starts talking to Jess, who starts drinking raw cow's milk. Jess, a mine manager for Silver, lost his wife Belle and their two daughters 15 years ago. Katie then makes her way to the front door stands there and introduces herself to Jess before grabbing her suitcase and going inside the house. When speaking with Katie, Jess discovers that she is his daughter and he gives her access to the house and only briefly inquires about Katie's mother later over dinner before urging her to divulge a little more personal information Katie claims. That her mother is a prostitute who had an on-campus romance, got pregnant, and is now a mother to a two-month-old son as well. She had to leave her house because her friends and family were making fun of her. However, when Jess overhears the conversation, he tells Katie to leave, but Katie manages to convince Jess to keep her with him. During Katie's nighttime preparations for bed, in an effort to see Katie's shadow, Jess attempts to peer out of the side window. The following morning, Katie can be seen near the silver mine. When Jess notices him, she rushes over to inform him that the mine had to be shut down, because the amount of silver had decreased. Even so, he still occasionally goes digging in it to find enough silver for his needs. Katie asserts that there will still be a significant amount of silver in it, and that both of them will become wealthy. But I can't tell you that terrible things always happen to bad thinking. Until Jess speaks about how she came here to mine silver in order to become wealthy, Katie then clarifies I had done terrible things and gotten good results. The owner of the silver mine galaxy's son is a son of mine. I want to provide for my son. Well, I want to take some silver from the mine owned by his father. So what exactly is wrong with it? As for Katie, she asserts that he attempted to marry her after getting her pregnant, but was rejected because her last name was Tyler. Katie asserts that she would act similarly if she had to make bad decisions for her child. Wash is the name of the galaxy's son. Then, as Jess walks into church while holding Katie's hand, he uses a microphone to tell everyone about his experience. Katie starts to flee the situation after experiencing terrible feelings. When she tries to thwart Jess, Katie dismisses her and runs away. Jess waits for Katie when she gets home but she doesn't appear that particular day. The following day, Katie gets out of the car. As Jess waits for it to arrive outside the house, Katie is questioned by Jess about the car's owner and passengers. Then Katie claims that the driver was actually her friend's brother. As the evening goes on, Jess, Katie and now Jess are present. Jess was upset with Katie over their conversation about church, and as a result, she has stopped speaking to him. Katie is welcome to stay here as long as she likes, and Jess assures her that he won't act in such a way again. When Jess informs Katie that he will start working in the mine again as of tomorrow, she is overjoyed. The two then start to slowly get intimate, but Jess stops and turns around. Then the next day, they are both seen working in the mine. They both go home in the evening, after neither of them discovers anything in the mine. That day, Katie arrives at her house exhausted and settles down right away. Katie undresses and gets into the bathtub. He will heat the water as Jess has stated. After taking a bath, you retire to bed. While giving a massage, Katie says please do. As Jess rubs her, she is also talking to Katie about giving him a massage. I enjoy being defiant, Jess asserts. No, I can't handle everything. My daughter, you, Katie replies. I'm a woman too. The following day, a man is standing on top of the mine while they are both digging in it. This time, they both get a lot of silver and are very content with their purchases, who is simultaneously watching him and listening to everyone, then sell the silver. Together Katie and Jess visit the market. Katie also suggests that while waiting for Jess to return from selling silver, she goes shopping. When he just returns, she implores him to stop the car in front of a store. Since Katie is unable to locate him there, she tells the shopkeeper that he has gone to the front pub. After sitting for a while, Jess returns and sees Katie dancing with a man as she is leaving. But when it's already too late, Katie just starts holding Katie's hand and drives her home. Katie, 
however, adamantly declares that she will be with them today, and declines to go back home. When Katie hears Jess say sometimes I'd be happy to, Katie turns her away and starts to move on. But as soon as Jess says whatever you want, I'm ready to go through with it, Katie gives a nod of approval before heading out with Jess. But as they depart, more people start attacking Jess. When Katie notices this, she joins the altercation, and Jess and Katie remove the aggressors from the bar together. They both need to show up in court. After this argument, the judge found a daughter in good standing because there was a police investigation. The two of them then immediately go home after having a great time in the car. When Janie, her older sister, shows up Katie notices that she has also brought Katie's two-month-old child with her. Katie is informed by Justin but she enters right away and doesn't pay much attention to him. Jess notices a mark on his stomach when he gives Katie some food at night. Though, Janie walks in, and tells Katie that Wash is ready to marry her, and will pick her up the following day. The day after that, when Walsh comes to pick Katie up, she informs him that she is not interested in being with him or getting married to him. After seeing how much Walsh loves him, she complies with his request to leave. Then the washer apologizes to the man. He is accepted by Jess. The wash also lets everyone know later that evening that Katie and I will be getting married in two days. As previously stated, Lane continues to approach, and because Jess despises it, he takes his rifle outside Lane. Then Ed Lane tries to persuade Jess to get out of the car, but she rejects him. He comes down and puts his revolver down. When Elaine then calls out to Jess, his wife Belle, Belle's condition has actually gotten worse. Consequently, those people had come to me, Katie. Ed Lane visits Belle in her room to speak with her. After all of those people come inside while this is going on, Nell attacks Ed Lane. But the next day at the funeral, Lane kills Belle. When Jess sees a mark on Ed Lane that was also present on Katie's child, he realizes that the child is not his, but rather Ed Lane's only, which explains why they will not kill him. Jess believes that Ed Lane has learned about the mine, so he rushes there with his rifle, and finds that Lane is digging in the mine. While the two are having a heated discussion, then Jess shoots him to death. Evelyn informs Jess that Katie is not his child, but rather mine, and that his son also carries this mark. And after throwing his body into the mine, Jess goes back to the wash house, and tells him that based on the scar on Ed Lane's stomach, which also appears on Adam's stomach, Ed Lane is actually the father of Katie's son. He merely starts the wash because he wants to humiliate Katie, now that he has realized she is not his daughter, but rather at Lane's. The following day, Katie and Walsh exchange vows. Because of this, Katie gets ready and waits outside the house for the wash. Katie, however, is extremely depressed because the washer doesn't have a rod to pick her up. After dinner, Jess woos Katie and tells her they'll both start back at the mine. The next day, hearing this excites Katie. Then the next day, as they were both moving toward the mine, Katie fell, and Jess made an effort to help her up. But after dropping him too, Katie began to get close to Jess, and he laughs as he witnesses it. They start to get pretty close when we get to the mine. Then, as they are both taking slivers out of the mine, the police show up and start detaining. Just the next day, when Jess asks the police about his crime, they respond that he is fully aware that having a sexual relationship with his own daughter is against the law. The court holds a mock trial against him the next day after hearing whose testimony. The judge rules that both of you broke the law in our country and will therefore be punished. After hearing this, Jess claims that it was actually her who pushed Katie into doing this and not the other way around. The judge only tells Jess that Katie is not my daughter but rather Ed's daughter, as he is about to announce his decision, because Moak was at Liam's brother. Jess does this to save Katie. Lamb speaks to prove that the mark on Katie's child's stomach is also on his stomach. For this reason, he rips the mocker's clothes off and shows everyone his back mark. And this proves that Katie, and not Jess, is the child of Liam. The defendants in both of those insult cases are then declared not guilty. A few days later, Jess and Katie relocate to a new city, and the narrative comes to an end.